Hello everyone, it's Trina here from There is a Card for That.ca and today I am going to be making this Winter Flowers Christmas card. We're using the Sketched Flowers stamp set from the Simon Says Stamp card kit as well as some heat embossing using Lawn Fawn's Gold Heat Embossing Ink. So I have cut down a piece of 110 pound white cardstock, same cardstock I use for layering and card bases and Copic markers, um, to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to stamp that with Versamark ink after using the um, Oh, what's it called? Oh my goodness. My powder tool. Wow. It has been so long. I have been so sick and my kids are sick and everybody's sick and it's right before Christmas and they went out for today. And so I'm really hoping that I can get this done before they, they get back. So I'm so sorry if my voice is scratchy and if I can't really think because I've had some sinus medication. We've all been there, right? Anyway, so I used my powder tool then I stamped the sketch flowers from the Simon Says Stamp card kit um, with Versamark ink and heat emboss that with gold Lawn Fawn embossing powder. So I'm just going to use my heat tool to set that and make sure it's all melted. And then I'm going to color all of the flowers with Copic markers. And I use a lot of them. So they're all listed across the bottom in no particular order. I just went from alphabetical and then by number all the way through to the end. I wanted this to be wintry because it's still going to be a Christmas card. So I'm using some purples and blues and greens and in the end it comes out really nice. I wasn't entirely certain when I was doing this how it was going to look because I typically only use three colors when I'm Copic coloring. I start with my medium and then I fill in with my shadows with the darkest and then go to my lightest, but I really wanted some serious depth and dimension, so there are going to be times in here where I pull in a fourth and sometimes even a fifth color for a color family. Um, this one particular flower that I'm starting with here, it's the only purple one. Um, I wanted it really to be the the star of the show so I do go back and forth in this one a lot I wanted a lot of depth and a lot of dimension and a lot of contrast and I think it worked out um, so when I do my Copic coloring I start instead of going from lightest to darkest and darkest back to lightest um, because I'm still not super comfortable. I've been Copa coloring for a while. I haven't taken classes. I'm by no means an expert. I just kind of go with what works for me. And I think that is the best advice that I can give to somebody who is starting out. Play around, do what works for you. A lot of people will say, no, you have to start with the darkest or no, you have to start with the lightest. Um, I've tried those, both of them. And what I find is most comfortable is using my medium shade starting where I want my shadows and my deepest colors to be, then going to my darker shade, filling in those shadows, going back to my lightest shade, blending it all out, and then going back and adding more shadows in or blending out with the medium, depending on how big an image is. If it's an image that I've colored multiple times, I'll start with my shadows and I'll go darkest to lightest because I know exactly where I want them because I have, I've colored it half a dozen times. This particular image, I don't think I've colored before. I think this is the first full one that I've done using this. I've used it as an overlay on another piece where you do like an ombre background and then just stamp over top and then you're basically done. Um, but for full on coloring, this is the first time I've done this. So I'm starting with my medium colors. And for these flowers here, I'm working in the BG family. And so I work with my medium color, map out where I want my shadows and the depth, so areas that are underneath other petals, the bottom of things because I typically have my light source coming from the front and usually the center. Um, sometimes I'll have it coming from the top right, 
It all depends on which direction, especially with critters, they're facing. Um, but for these flowers, because at this point I still didn't know if I was going to have this panel lying landscape, so the flowers were at the bottom, or if I was going to have it portrait style with the flowers along the left side, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, so I decided I was going to have the light source coming from the front in the middle so that when I decide whether portrait or landscape, it still would make sense. Um, I wasn't, I knew I wasn't going to flip it and have the flowers at the top because then it wouldn't make sense to have all of the shadows at the bottom when I'm doing this. Um, so I start with my medium tone and I go on the lower part of each petal and I go where there's going to be overlap to create that shadow and then I go in with my darker tone, deepen those shadows a bit, go back to my light tone, blend that all out and then I can go back and use my darkest tone to increase that contrast to really get some depth and I think you can really see that in the purple flower the first one that I had done I didn't know how much more purple I was going to use I didn't know which shades I was going to use for that more of a pointy flower it looks kind of like a Kind of like a poinsettia it's like right underneath my ring and middle finger on my left hand there it's the one that's still blank i left that to the end because i just didn't know i didn't want another purple one right close to that i already had a lot of bgs going on with those rose looking flowers i don't know what they're called <laughs> and um for these smaller ones almost like berries they kind of remind me of pussy willows um but I decided to do those in a really dark blue to get that cold, cold feeling in contrast to the purple. Purple is one of those colors for me where I don't know if it's a, a cool color or a warm color. Um, I know typically most people tend to think of purple as a cooler color because it falls at the other end of the spectrum after the blues but to me purple is a warm color one of my best friends her favorite color is purple and all of my memories with her are very happy so purple reminds me of her which gives me a warm feeling right so it's kind of one of those like I don't know where I'm going with this yet so I ended up deciding to do a light blue for that flower and I'm quite glad that I did I think it offsets the dark blue of those little buds quite nicely I then went in with some cool gray markers all around the bottom edge of the stems and the flowers and the embossing to get my shadows. I then decided that I was going to do them all the way around. Because why not? At this point I still wasn't sure if it was going to be a portrait or a landscape style and if my light source is right in the front there is a good chance that there's going to be shadows all the way around it you'll be able to see it because the image will be smaller than the shadow that it casts the further it away further away it is from the background so i'm putting this back into my misty and the greeting that i'm using is from a close to my heart set called to you and yours seasons and nature and i am using the winter wishes greeting and again I'm using my powder tool and I'm gonna stamp that in the Versamark ink and then use the same gold embossing powder by Lawn Fawn just to keep that together. I had played around with the idea of doing it in black but then I thought that there would be I thought that it would be really clashing to the effect that I wanted to get with this piece. I didn't want the bold black outlines around the flowers so if I had used black for the greeting I think your eye would just be drawn to the greeting and kind of stick there as opposed to flowing all over the page. So I'm using a dry paintbrush just to get rid of some strays. It will happen whether you use the powder tool or not though it will happen less often if you use the powder tool. And then I'm just going to heat that again with my heating heating tool. There's a lot of tools. How many times can I say tool in one video, right? <laughs> um, and then, of course, I needed to splatter. And I've played around with, like, just putting it on my craft mat and then picking it up with my paintbrush. And that's never really worked for me. 
So I just put my Perfect Pearls in the gold color right on an acrylic block and spritz it with the Distress water sprayer. And then I'm just going to flick over the edge of the acrylic block right onto the, the panel. And I had cut the panel down by about an inch, no, three quarters of an inch, because I wanted a accent border. And I had thought about doing a gold accent border or pulling in a dark blue, but I didn't have a dark blue that really matched the Copic markers that I had used in those little buds. Um, and it looked kind of tacky. So I decided to use black because black will accent pretty much everything, especially when you're using a lot of color. And then I'm going to use foam tape to pop up the panel with all of the coloring and the heat embossing um, right onto the front of my A2 sized card base. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half for the total card size. And that's going to go right on there. And I'm just measuring how much higher I can put the foam tape because I don't want it to get squished if this does end up going in the mail. And then I'm just going to remove those backing pieces off of there. And I'm trying to be very careful when I press this panel down because my Perfect Pearl splatters were not completely dry yet. It's super important when you're going to be pushing something that you make sure it's dry <laughs> because I've done it before where I will have something and it'll be wonderful and I'll be all excited about it and then I go to push it down and it wasn't dry and it smeared and it wrecked and I was sad and I didn't want that with this one but I really wanted to get this card done like I filmed this card two weeks ago maybe three and now I'm finally getting here to do the voiceover like how sad is that hey <laughs> So I had this gold sparkly ribbon and I think I just got it from the dollar store. I like to get things from the dollar store, you may have noticed. Um, and I wanted to use it right along the edge of the popped up white panel to give it a little bit of a break between the black and the white um, pieces. It felt really, really incomplete and with this here, it just gives that sweet little border and I think it looks super fantastic. So that is going to be our card for today. There's no extra embellishments. Thank you all so much for watching and commenting and thumbs upping. My blog post and my Facebook post links will be down below. Have a great day and a very Merry Christmas. Bye.